In this video, I'm going to let my Twitch chat create and put together a character which we will then sculpt. A group of artists in a single space, giving suggestions. I mean, what could go wrong? So, this is how it works. I have a list of characteristics and items which I will need my chat to decide on what they will be. All of their suggestions for each characteristic and item will be thrown into the wheel of names, which we will then spin. Whichever we land on is what we have to sculpt. If you're not here from the Twitch, consider checking out the Twitch. The links are all in the description. All right, so what species are we going to sculpt today, chat? Goblin, ogre, furry. No, furry is a category. Werewolf, bruh. All the furries are coming out. A lizard, a demon, a rock monster. I kind of like that. Do we have human already? Slime, a mermaid. Okay, gnomes. All right, three, two, one, roll. Kuklops. We're doing a Kuklops. Do we want to do a Cyclops or should we reroll? Reroll. Okay, re -roll. let's reroll this shit. Goblin. Are we good with Goblin? Okay, Goblin. Okay, okay. Goblin. Goblin. Goblin it is. So the next thing that we spun the wheel for was for a theme and we landed on sci-fi. So a space goblin. Cool, right? All right. Now let's spin for a skin color. Cyan. Okay. Yellow. Now that's just racist. Can we do gradient? Can we do a gradient? Nope. Not a good idea. Can we do a gradient? No. Nah, I think that's a pretty cool concept. Okay, we're gonna have two colors, no rainbow. Anything else? Minecraft Steve t-shirt blue. <laughs> that is a very specific blue. Yeah, so guess what we landed on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and of course, red. So things pretty much went downhill from here. Fedora. Okay, how about a cool set of sci-fi armor? PJs, do we want PJs? A cool pair of combat boots. Do we stick with this? Primary weapon? Oh, yo-yo. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll take that. So, secondary weapon? Okay, there it is. Okay, we have one more to spin for. It has to be good. It has to be good. Okay, so here is what we ended up with. A comically muscular goblin in a sci-fi setting with the stupidest set of equipment. I threw the list on Discord to let the artists in chat come up with their own interpretations. Also, thank you patrons for supporting the channel. A quick shout out to a sponsor tier member, Ruby Lux. Now, we need to come up with a concept for this abomination. So I'm gonna start by blocking out the shapes and proportions of the goblin. This is the time to be bold and loose with your decisions. I'm using a bunch of simple meshes with low poly counts to convey each body part. Goblin ear Sure, that's a sphere with the help of a grab brush. A torso? Sure, that's a sphere with the help of a grab brush. You need some delts? Sure, grab brush, grab brush. Duplicate for the abdomen? Grab brush. Abdomen times 2 to the power of 2 equals arms. Upper arms equals thighs. Thighs plus some ass equals lower half of the legs. Yeah, turns out sculpting is just simple maths. Okay, but I'm not saying that you can't remesh. I'm saying to keep the resolution low enough where you can easily manipulate the meshes. Not your partners or loved ones, meshes. Now I'm gonna check if I've captured the comically muscular aspect of the goblin and it should be clear even if you're just looking at his silhouette and yeah i like it so let's pose the goblin real quick but not without his fedora my goblin so i'm gonna break the symmetry now and just twist and turn things around right now the idea is that i want the goblin to be hovering mid-air as if he just jumped off a box about to launch his yo-yo weapon i'm gonna keep fiddling around until i find a dynamic yet readable pose at this stage we don't want to be too slow and we don't want to get too attached to any of the objects created we want to delete them whenever they don't work out and committing to the details would only make it harder to do so. So there's another reason to stick with low resolution meshes at this stage. And here's what we have so far. Now here's a problem. The tertiary weapon is a spoon with a hole in it. A spoon with a hole in it. So what the hell am I supposed to do with it? But I was thinking, if you shifted the hole to the edge of the spoon, right? It's now a poking device. So that's exactly what I did. It still counts, right? Now, I want to take a glimpse at what the Minecraft Steve T-shirt blue skin would look like. So let's play around with a few different combinations. Uh, never mind. Let's refine the sculpt a little. I'm going to touch up on the shapes and forms of the fedora. Now that the pose isn't symmetrical, I'm going to need to work on getting everything in the right place. A reference that I use all the time are the books from Anatomy for Sculptors. I like to keep screenshots of any relevant pages from the digital books and just throw them into a PRF file, then have them on my second monitor just as a means to fact check. After blessing the goblin with wings for lats that can shelter a family of five and thunder and thunder, 
eyes that could feed them for weeks, I now feel that the cape is kind of muddying up the overall silhouette. So let's continue to fiddle around with the cape, and yeah, undeniably better. Oh, and I also tweaked the rotation of the pencil. Now, instead of having an eraser in the back, let's maybe add some thrusters. I guess you can say that this idea is pretty fire. After adding a few more placeholders for some sci-fi gadgets, it's time to refine the sculpt. This is the time to increase the resolution of the meshes and dive deeper into details. For the crocs, I'm gonna first refine the shape of it, then roughly block out the sports mode strap and some gibbets. Now I'm gonna create a plane and merge the vertices to center, then with the snapping mode set to face, I'm gonna extrude and snap the vertices to the sculpt, then fill in the faces, and just like that, we have some retopologized crocs. Extract the base of it, and boom. Souls. For the rounded part of the sports mode strap, I'm gonna use the loop tools circle. Clean. Now the scary part. The holes. I'm gonna use a bunch of cylinders and closely follow a reference that was conveniently in my shoe rack thingy. Same concept with the holes on the side. Then with the boolean modifier, we now have lore accurate holes. At the cost of our clean topology, of course. For the cherry on top, I'm gonna remesh the crocs, smooth out the holes. Then with the magic of the quad remesher, we now have our clean topology back. With the cost, of course. With a very similar method to the retopology process, I'm gonna rush out a not super accurate sole pattern, but with how deceptively complicated it looks, I think it gets the job done. Now all there's left to do is to refine parts of the crocs and to model out the gibbets, nothing too fancy, and crocsicles. It's finally time to texture. I know, what, what, what happened to the crocs? It's a time-traveling pair of crocs, okay? Now, very much like blocking out your sculpts, this is the time to be loose with the color scheme. The story that I have in mind for the goblin is that he's a mercenary on vacation, which explains the pajamas and crocs, but was summoned for an unexpected side quest that required some combat, which explains the last-minute disguise. Now, I feel that the pajamas aren't distinct enough from the combat gear, so... Hi, Barbie. Should make the rocket and be the pink color of pencil, pencil erase. Oh, honestly, a cute idea. Not gonna lie. I might just do that. And so I did. After refining the head of the goblin, I'm gonna use the quad remesher to get a clean topology. Then let's use the multi res modifier, add some subdivisions, then add more details. Now let's give this gobo some pores. Under texture properties, let's create a Voronoi texture and play around with the settings. I pretty much never use the clay brush, so this shall now be the pore brush. Select the Voronoi texture that we just created and set mapping to area plane. Set the stroke method to anchored and give the goblin some pores. Now let's bake down the details. First, I'm gonna lower the level viewport port to 1. This means that the details will be baked specifically for this level of detail. Then let Smart UV unwrap the head with an angle limit of 35 degrees, average the island scales for good measure, then pack islands with a margin of 0.002. I'm gonna leave the scale and rotation on and hit OK. We need an image texture to bake the details onto, so let's create one in 4K resolution and set it to non-color. Then go to render properties, bake, and make sure to check bake from multi-res then hit bake and let the magic happen. Once we're done, let's not forget to save the texture. Connect the image into a normal map node, then connect it to the normal socket of the principal shader and details. Lastly, for the Minecraft Steve t-shirt blue and red skin, I think I finally cracked the code. So instead of having a gradient to blend between the two colors, I'm going to blend them by using a Voronoi noise texture as a mask to create these scale patterns on the skin. Then I'll manually paint in some smaller scales to create a cleaner transition between the blues and the reds. The Voronoi mask texture could then be plugged into the height socket of the bump node to create height for the scales. I'm gonna add another layer of Voronoi texture to create these dots for some variety. And there you go, Minecraft Steve t-shirt blue and red skin. We're pretty much done at this point, but I feel that we're still lacking in the sci-fi realm of things. But again, I think I found the solution. Panels. That's right. When in doubt, add panels. Okay, it's almost tradition at this point that I waste more time and produce a soundtrack for the video, right? Now, before I reveal the final results, here are what you guys have submitted. Regardless of the ridiculous trait sheet that we ended up with, I think it's still so incredible to see all the different interpretations in one place. I really appreciate all of your submissions. All the links of these incredible artists are in the description down below. So without further ado, this is how it turned out.
Watch this video next to learn where 500 plus hours of sculpting can get you. And check the pinned comment for the next date of the challenge. Bye guys.